Video Studio Pro is used quite widely in videos that have subtitling. In this case, I have a project where I narrated a voiceover track. To do a voiceover track, what you do is you click on the capture tool and click on voiceover. What voiceover will do is it'll allow you to use your microphone to be able to voiceover and narrate your video. Once you have completed voiceover, it will create a number of WAV files or audio files in your microphone track. To be able to generate subtitles from this WAV file, click on the WAV file and then click on the Subtitle Editor button. When the Subtitle Editor opens, it will show you the WAV file. As you can see here, me scrubbing around. On the right side, you have a list of all the different time codes that will be generated for your titling, as well as the subtitled content. In the bottom part of the screen, you have a transport control to play your video and to jump around and to actually go back to the previous frame and the next frame, and also change your in and out points to refine your subtitling. The voice recording quality really depends on the environment where you took your voice from. In this case here, I have a fair environment with some background noise. If you were in the studio, you would pick best with no background noise. The sensitivity also determines where the, the software will determine where your voice ended and where silence starts. I'm going to set it to high. When you're finished with that, just hit scan. You'll notice here I have three subtitles generated on these three different time codes, as is shown here. To see if these subtitles are correct and if they correspond with my speaking, I'm going to go in here and just simply put in numbers where the subtitle should go. So there I have three numbers. I'll use the transport control to go back to the very beginning of my WAV file and hit play. This is a test of the subtitling function using the subtitle editor. You'll notice that all my numbers worked perfectly in that sense. If I scrub through in my transport control you can see the orange highlighted WAV file has my subtitle sitting in the top. Once that's good I can go in and add more subtitling. If, for instance, the subtitle was too short, I can stretch it out using the handles. You can add all your subtitles here if you'd like. You can type in the content that you want here. If you use an outside editor, you can go in and save as a subtitle file to be able to use it in your outside subtitle editor. You can also change the properties of your subtitle. That's the property of the text, the font, and the color. I click on that by clicking on the Text Options button. You'll notice here it gives you some placeholder text, as well as the font, the font size, the font color, and the sh shadow and the glow, and where it is positioned on the screen. So let me position it into the center and change the font and change the size. Now if I play back my subtitles, this is a test of the subtitling function using the subtitle editor. Once you're done, just hit OK. You'll notice now in your title track there are three new titles. These are subtitles based on the time code. And if I play, you'll notice that the WAV file will play back with the subtitled content and the video. This is a test of the subtitling function using the subtitle editor. So there you have it. Very simple subtitling using the subtitle editor and its voice detection mechanism.